In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about um, themes in biology, specifically in the AP Biology course, the themes that the course is organized around. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about organization of living things. So in biology, we can think about all of biology being organized around these recurring themes um, in whatever system you're looking at, whatever organism you're looking at, you can see these themes and you can identify um, where these themes come out. Um, and so it helps us to kind of organize and understand what we're learning about when we learn in biology. The first theme is evolution. Of course, life evolves, and we're going to be spending a good deal of time talking about how life evolves in biology course. Um, I want you to understand that evolution means change over time and that Darwin proposed the mechanism by which evolution occurs. He didn't come up with the idea of evolution. He came up with the idea of how it happens, and we call this natural selection. So even though we see diversity in living things, we know that they are all connected through these evolutionary relationships. They all uh, came from a common ancestor at some point in the past. The second theme is energy. All living things require energy, and all living things use energy. And so when you look at life processes at every single level, from uh, um, molecules, really, all the way up through uh, the biosphere, you see that energy is required for things to occur. Um, in physics, we learned about the first and second laws of thermodynamics. In fact, you may have learned about it in chemistry class. Um, but life systems have to obey the first and second law of thermodynamics. And so things that we study throughout um, biology, you'll be seeing that we will need to refer to the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Um, we also will study how energy flows between living organisms and the environment. And, of course, this diagram here is showing um, within a cell how energy is utilized, glucose being broken down by the mitochondria in the cell into, uh, into the waste products, carbon dioxide and, and water, and then generating some ATP, which is the energy form that cells use. The third theme is information. Life depends upon the processing of information of various kinds. Um, we can look at, you know, the, at the smallest, most basic, life uses the molecule DNA to code for information. Specifically, DNA codes for proteins, um, and proteins are actually the molecules that are going to determine your traits and characteristics. We also can look at information processing and information use in nervous systems, in animals, as another example. Uh, nerve cells carry information electrically and chemically. And of course, it's your nervous system that can help your body to maintain homeostasis, control all the activities of your body. Finally, the fourth theme is interaction. Living organisms interact with one another and with their environment in complex ways. And there's lots of ways that we're going to look at this throughout the year. Um, all kinds of complex interactions. Living things are not isolated. They are not, you can't just kind of think of them as an isolated thing. You have to think about all the interactions going on within them and then outside of them as well. We have atoms interacting in a molecule, we have molecules interacting inside cells, we have cells interacting inside organisms, and then we have organisms interacting with one another in a population and all of that. Finally, in this lesson, I wanted to talk about um, how, organ how living organisms and the systems that they live in are organized, some ways that we can think about how they're organized. We start here with the smallest level of organism, which is an atom. Now, when you think about an atom, that's not really alive. It's not really considered a living thing, but living things are composed of atoms. The smallest particle of an element. Atoms uh, combine together to form molecules, which is a combination of atoms, such as in living things. We have DNA, glucose, and water, very important. The molecules combine together to form the cell, which is the smallest unit of life. So this is the smallest thing we can talk about that actually is alive. We have red blood cells, epithelial cells, nerve cells. Um, 
cells grouping together form what we call tissues. There are four kinds of tissues that we'll learn about. This is one epithelial tissue. These are similar cells that perform a specific function in the body. Tissues form together to form organs, such as the stomach. Organs form together to form an organ system within an organism, um, such as the digestive system. This is two or more organs working together for a specific bodily function. Now, when you combine all those organism, I'm sorry, organ systems together, you end up with a whole organism, such as this antelope. This is an individual thing composed of many cells, a multicellular organism. Now I've shifted the view a little bit. We ended up with the, the antelopes. Now let's look at a population, which are members of the same species that live in an area together, um, such as the herd of the antelope. From there, even larger is the community around that population. This is two or more populations that live together and interact, such as in this uh, grassland ecosystem, we have the snake, the antelope, the hawk, the bushes, and the grass. Um, finally, we have the ecosystem, which is the community and its non-living surroundings. So we include all those living organisms and the rocks and the stream. That's an ecosystem. And then finally, we can think about the whole Earth um, biosphere with all the ecosystems combined, which would be the largest um, organizational unit of living things.